Welcome to the Spirit of a Badass, where we celebrate stories of courage, hope, and resiliency. I'm your host, Alicia Jacobson. Hey, badasses. I'm coming here today straight from the gym. I usually show up to these because I also do video. So I wear like makeup and generally my clothes are more put together, but I legit am like gym hair. I have still like the crusty salty face (laughs) from you get when you're sweating and I'm still cold from the sweat on my gym clothes right now. But I wanted to get this recorded because during my workout, I had the most massive breakthrough on something that I have been working on for like 12 years. And I wanted to, I don't even know if I'm going to share this podcast. I don't know, because I'm going to go way deeper here than I've ever, and more personal than I've ever gone before. Uh, So we'll see. So maybe this won't even make the cut. I don't know. But if it does, buckle up. (laughs) And you're going to get a little peek into sort of how I self-coach myself through things. And I'll kind of share all the tools that I have used over the years and then kind of what happened in the last 48 hours to kind of come to this breakthrough space that I am in right now. And my mind is still like, I have no script today. I have no outline. I just have a brain full of like, holy shit, girl. (laughs) Oh, like 50 million of those. Like, holy shit. Okay. So here is like, I'm going to back up 12 years ago and I'm going to bring you to today. So many of you know that I have been divorced. I've been divorced since 2011, 2012, and it was atrocious. It was all consuming for me. I went from being a stay-at-home mom to leaving the house that I shared with my family and just taking my kids and getting out. So we left and it was, I think, I think I've said this here before. I think the term is high conflict divorce. It was awful, like awful, awful, awful. And it was awful for years and years and years. And a lot of the tools that I actually have now that I have adapted for health and things like that have come from how I learned to be in high conflict, high stress, very triggered situations. So the podcast I did on the power of pause, that is a real thing that I did over and over and over. And I didn't do it at first. There was great joy that came from reacting. And it was like, I had to get whatever the trigger, how I was feeling out of me. So essentially, if you listen to that podcast, I talked about like emotional eating. It's essentially the same thing. You feel triggered. You immediately go eat to self-soothe yourself or whatever it is. Mine was re reacting to my ex, whether it was via text message or just something where I was like, oh, well, you made me feel this. I'm going to do whatever. And it was like this, like I needed to release the pressure that I was feeling. And then after years of realizing like, oh, (laughs) that's not, that's not helpful. That's not going to work. I taught myself eventually to pause and I was able to lessen the trigger response. So the feeling I had in my body when it happened. So I created that space between trigger and then I was able to most of the time respond and not react. So I haven't had, I haven't had to deal truly, really with my ex-husband in many years. We still have some, you know, court things that I have to deal with, but it's not something that I, I have to deal with all the time. But the deeper issue is I have so much resentment and so much anger and I don't want to. And so it's been this battle within me to get this icky feeling out of me to remove this resentment and come to a place like I've done these meditations where it's like, picture the person and picture them in love. (laughs) And I'm in these meditations and I'm trying to do this, you know, because I want to get to a place and I can't do it. And I have spent, I can't tell you one, how much money I've spent therapy, books, meditation practices, Reiki, acupuncture, all the things, coaches, 
I have spent so much money on how can I get this released, let it go from my physical body because it's quite, it is, it's housed in me and it's frustrating to me. And the time, the time, oh my gosh, I don't even want to know how much time that I have dedicated to trying to make this stop. Like essentially like if it was inside me, I want to pull it out and I want to like put it in one of those, like a slingshot thing, but not a slingshot, like the big ones where it's like a catapult type thing. And I want to like launch it (laughs) out of me. Okay. So this is what I have been grappling with. We are, we are at a full moon today. Uh, I'm recording this. I'm just about to get my period. So, I mean, you know, full moon, getting your period. There's just a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of hormonal changes. So I spent a good bit of the day yesterday just in tears. Like it was a high emotion. Now this had nothing to do with the whole story that I just told you. This had to do with, well, it kind of does. I I take that back. Let me just tell. So here's how I made the connection. So back in the day before when I was still married, my ex would tell me basically that I was worthless. I was nothing. At one point he said something to the effect, and I'm so glad that I actually can't recall the exact words that he said, because that's sort of like, oh, like the, it's starting to soften and maybe it's going away, but something to the effect of your, where's your Tony Robbins attitude going to take you, or like, it's going to take you nowhere, or just essentially saying that. I was trying to, you know, improve my mental health and better myself and just be better essentially and grow, (laughs) have a growth mindset. And he was cutting me down, telling me that I was nothing and I was never going to be anything. And just like, I remember where I was standing. I remember all these things. And so fast forward to yesterday, I was having this moment of like, I feel, and this is going to sound really deep and I'm not looking for any sort of sympathy, but I understand that people also feel this way and it's heavy and it's also fucked up because I don't feel this way all the time, but every once in a while, it's like a freaking Mack truck. Like I felt so bad and I felt so worthless. Like what is the point of like, I'm not making a difference. I'm not like, I'm not good enough. Like this, like enough feeling. And I just tell you, I talk about this stuff. So it's so, it's like this weird experience to, for me to be sitting here and one part of me saying like, you are enough. You have the, like all, like me telling other people these things. And then you have me on some random Thursday in tears because I'm feeling just like, garbage. And I've been here before. I have talked about this in my past, but I haven't talked about it, how it's still something that I cannot shake. And I know it goes back. It, it, it's, it goes back to the messages that I was told. And I have had this idea that I've had to prove myself for years now. And I, a lot of the things that I have done in my life now, you know, in the past probably 15 years are in direct opposition of showing like, see, I can do this. See, it's like this, like I I can do it, but I don't want to be coming from that. I have to prove myself space. I just want to be <laughs> in the space. Yesterday, I had done a human design reading, I think a year and a half ago or so. And sometimes when I get to the space of feeling just like I'm not in alignment with myself, I reflect back on this like PDF worksheet that she gave me. And it just says kind of about who you are and how you best work because it's just, it's really helpful. So anyway, yesterday I pulled this out and it was talking about my, I think it's your heart center. And it was talking about how I have an open heart and it was saying how you have nothing to prove and you are worthy something about your worth and you have nothing to prove. And I read this and I immediately started bawling even more. <laughs> anyway, I reached out to Dana, the woman who gave me my human design reading. And I was just like, Hey, 
this was in my chart that you gave me. Do you have any resources or any anything that you can tell me? Because I feel like I keep for years coming round and round to this idea that I, every once in a while, that I'm not inherently worthy or I have to prove myself to be worthy. And one, if you are feeling, if you are feeling like trash and you feel like, oh, I want to reach out to this person. Can I just say, please reach out? Because she followed up with me immediately. And had she not, had I not reached out to her, because if, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to be a burden. Like, and I legitimately like word vomited all the things. I'm like, I just need you to know, like, I'm okay. <laughs> and also I'm, I'm dealing with this and I don't want to be. So she, what she said to me then resulted in my sort of mind blowing. So basically what she said is in my chart, like, yes, I, I will inherently, you know, feel this way that I need to prove myself and it will keep coming up. So that makes sense that this is something I have dealt with for a long time and it will keep coming up. So how can I, how can I be like, have the awareness essentially that this is something that is going to keep coming up? Now I'm going to take you to my exercise class. I'm in my exercise class. We got to do, and it's no wonder that I had a breakthrough. We got to do like kettlebell swings and sumo deadlifts and like running and all the things that make me like box jump type things. And these are all the things that like make my soul happy. So this is no wonder. So I'm doing my kettlebell swing and all of a sudden I'm like, wait a motherfucking second. Okay. So what she said to me was, this is inherently going to keep coming up. This is something I'm essentially always going to have to deal with. Okay. If it's something I'm always going to have to deal with it, it's not something I'm going to be able to let go of, to release it, which is what I have essentially spent (laughs) the last, God, 10 years thinking that it was something I could just get out of me, that I could just do a meditation or go to therapy or do my coaching or whatever, and it would be done. And I keep going round and round thinking that something is wrong with me because I haven't gotten to the point where I can just let it go, get it out of me, stop feeling this way. Okay. So then I think, well, wait a second here. I have to metabolize it. Every single time it comes up, I have to metabolize it in my body. Just like every time you eat, you have to like break the food down. (laughs) You know, it sounds like just like you do it once, you have to keep doing it. And that was such a game changer for me to think of like, wait a second. Okay. I just have to switch my mindset around this, the way I'm thinking of it, because the way I'm thinking is this is a one and done. And what is wrong with me that I can't just be done feeling resentment. I can't just be done feeling inherently, (laughs) I know that I'm worthy. Okay. Like, and that's what I told her too. I'm like, logically, I understand this, but there's just something in me that every once in a while is so, it's like, it's kind of, it's just sad. Like yesterday was sad, but also I had to move through it. But that is going to be something I now have a very clear understanding and without judgment that is going to have to happen over and over and over again, that I'm going to have to be able to have this resentment feeling. And I will tell you, like a lot of it comes up around finances and things like that, because like it's a lot, you know, or like when I have to be in many different places at one time and I get really resentful that I'm sort of shouldering the, and it's not a burden. Like I absolutely love doing it and I truly wouldn't change it, but I get real pissed off, (laughs) real pissed off. And it annoys me because I don't want to be mad. I don't want to be like resentful because it's like a hijacking feeling. So I now have this understanding of like, okay, this is something I'm going to feel. It's not something I can just do any number of techniques and then be done with it forever. This is something that is sort of like, if you are a certain way, I've talked about this. When I talked about me not getting up and exercising in the morning and working with your flow, knowing who you are first, like in the goal setting episode, knowing who you are at your core so that you can work 
with that. And with this, I, I think, and not that I want resentment to be a part of my core, but I think it's still a part of me. And as much as I don't want it to be a part of me, the amount of energy that I have been spending trying to get it out of me, if I would just accept it at the moment, metabolize through it, so essentially pause <laughs> and process it versus trying to resist it, being so pissed off that it is a part of what I, I'm currently experiencing and move through it versus being constant resistance and irritation through it, with it. This is no different than those of you who, if you are a person who emotionally eats and you're like, why can't I stop doing this? What if, what if you know that, okay, this is going to be a part of you and every time it comes up, you're going to have to metabolize through it. You're going to have to flow through it every single time. You're going to have to experience the dif discomfort. It's not something necessarily you're going to be able to release and let go of. And if you can have this awareness of, oh, this is, this is a part of me right now. doesn't mean it's going to have to be a part of you forever, but right now, this is a part of your life situation, your life circumstances and, and work with it versus being resistant and trying to like get it away from you. It's more like, okay, this is what's happening. So I understand that I'm working towards <laughs> not, not feeling, not having certain reactions to things. And there's my word. It came up in my workout today. And this is really, this is something I have to deal with. So how can I deal with this and understand that this is going to be something that's reoccurring for me? And when it does come up, I will handle it. I will work with it. I will have an understanding of, I know this is something that I'm really working hard at <laughs> and, and, and I can handle it. I can do this. I am not broken. There's nothing wrong with me. There is a reason that you got here and you can figure out how to navigate the situation that you're in. So whatever it is that you, that comes up that you're like, I don't want to be this way, <laughs> you know, like I don't, but it is a part of what's happening now. So if it's going to be there, how can you work with it versus trying to run away from it or like push it away from you, get it out of you. So anyway, like I said, I don't know if this is going to make its way to any of you because this is, like I said, like I legit just came from my exercise class. But this idea of my worthiness, you know, being tied to how, you know, the, the way I was told I was not worthy was like my mothering, my my work. Like it was like you are not successful unless or you are not a good mother person, whatever. So I spent a lot of time trying to prove that that I was, that I was worthy. And and so I think there is a, just a great connection between how I was feeling when these sort of feelings come up because I was like, why have I been dealing with this for so long? <laughs> like it's not every day. It's not even every month. But it's like this interesting thing of like, oh, this is still here and I thought I got rid of it. And now I have this kind of understanding of like, oh, I may never get rid of this, but I can handle it and I can still be my best self and, and hold this other thing that sort of rears its ugly head and what can it teach me? Because it taught me, it taught me this. And I think hopefully me sharing it with you, you know, that you will have some sort of connection also of like, oh, this is something that I keep running into, that it keeps coming up. That I just want to get it out of me or away from me, or I don't want to be this way. Like, how can you hold the idea of, okay, this might be, this might be here. 
This might be here. And if it's going to be here, how do I want to be when it is here? How can I, how can I move it through me? And it's more of like a release rather than letting go. And maybe those mean the same two things, but I think there's like, let go feels like it's like gone forever. And a release kind of feels like, maybe I don't know if they're the same, but I guess release just feels more accurate to me of like, you can release things through like exercise, the like shaking. I don't know if I've talked on that here before. There's like where you do like brushing to yourself or you like shake, like dance, things like that can release the sort of energy and help it move through you. So maybe next time you want to emotionally just start dancing, shaking and brushing yourself. I don't know. <laughs> Try it. Anyway, oh, I haven't. So I haven't done this in a long time. The, the last time I actually spoke very openly and freely about all the things that I experienced was probably when I was in the middle of it and I had this blog but it was more like a diary. And I spoke, even now when I read it, I'm like, ew. <laughs> but it was helpful to, it was helpful to people then. So anyway, that's, that's what, that was the kind of like, Hey, you don't have to, you don't have to be any different. This, this may not be let go from you. This may be in, in, in you and a part of you and how can you work with it instead of against it? And that just feels so much more like, oh, I can handle this when it does arise and I can move it through me versus me spending legit so many fucking hours trying to let go of feeling resentment and let go of the sort of words that were embedded in me. And I don't know that that's going to happen. And that's okay. That's okay. So I don't know. There we are. There we are. Okay. I am done. I'm done purging my aha moment for today. <laughs> if this if this does go out there to the masses, I would be interested. What well, I would love some feedback on it to see if I have these moments every so often. Usually I do not come to my computer and do a podcast on it, but I would be interested to hear how it hit you. You can leave a review. You can send me a message, Facebook, Alicia Jacobson, Instagram, Alicia Jacobson. And I would love to hear your kind of how this hit for you. If anything, if it stirred anything up in you. All right. Have a fabulous day. Spirit of a Badass is a Lit Path Studios podcast and is produced by Jamie Gale and Alicia Jacobson. Music by Shane Ivers. We'll be back with another inspiring interview Until then, keep your spirits high and your energy badass.